It's a fascinating thing because we've been watching these characters now for six seasons, and this is the first scene they've had together. Two of the most important characters on the show, and they've never been together on camera before. It just worked out beautifully. The idea that after all John and Sansa had been through as characters, that they were finally able to put a foot back on solid ground in terms of family and somebody with whom they have a bond that runs deeper than any other bond. It was a big moment for the two of them and for us to see it played out. And to learn where these two are gonna go with a relationship that never really meant that much to either one of them before, but now means so much because at this point, they're all that they have. They both suffered so much, and they've both been through so much, and it's interesting to see the different directions that their individual sufferings have taken them. I can't stay here, not after what happened. There's only one place we can go. Home. Well, should we tell the Boltons to pack up and leave? We'll take it back from them. John's just not ready to get back into the fight. Since he left Winterfell, it's been essentially one long fight against everyone possible. He fought as hard as he possibly could, and then he was killed. And so he just wants out. It's really only the additional pull of family and finding out that Rickon Stark is still alive that forces his hand and pulls him back into this fray he was trying to step away from. A monster has taken our home and our brother. We have to go back to Winterfell and save them both. He has to do the right thing. That's what makes him Jon Snow, and that's why we love him, and that's why he gets himself killed. <laughs> we enter these negotiations with open eyes. Trust me, my own recent experience with slavery has taught me the horrors of that institution. How many days we were slave? Long enough to know. Not long enough to understand. One of the historical examples that we looked to when writing these scenes was Oddly enough, was Abe Lincoln, because Abe Lincoln was trying desperately to stave off a civil war between the North and the South. And he wasn't ready to get rid of slavery quite as quickly as people think. I mean, he was trying to talk to the Southerners and work out some kind of compromise at first. And, you know, with Tyrion, it's as he says to Grey Worm Day, slavery is an evil, war is an evil, and I can't end both at once. So what's the, you know, what's the solution here? The whole point of diplomacy is compromise. Here is the Queen's proposal. Instead of abolishing slavery overnight, we will give you seven years to end the practice. In exchange, you will cut off your support for the Sons of the Harpy. His proposed compromise, which he thinks of as a good idea, is incredibly offensive to Misende and Grey Worm, who were slaves. And, you know, from their point of view, you don't make a compromise with slavers because that's, that's making a deal with the devil. So they're entering into these negotiations with the slavers with deep skepticism, but Daenerys did choose this man to advise her, so if he's saying there's a chance, they're willing to, to try it, but with grave suspicions. You will not use them. They will use you. That is what they do. One of the things that was interesting for us is, you know, seeing how Danny can be strong when she is not in a position of power. You know, all the calls of all the gathered Kalasars were within the Temple of Dashkalin, and Danny, an unarmed little woman, killed them all by herself. You know, she didn't have a dragon fly in and do it. It was all Danny. The end of episode 604 was definitely meant consciously to echo the end of episode 110. It's Danny stepping out of a flame to great effect. This time, it was just on a much, much larger scale. Rebirth is clearly a theme this season, you know, whether it's Jon Snow or Danny emerging again from the fires. When she did it the first time, only you know a few score people witnessed this this miracle of Daenerys Targaryen emerging unscathed from from the flames. Now it's the Dothraki as a people who witnessed this. The act of stepping out of that burning temple, in which all the 
Dothraki power structure had just perished pretty much makes her the queen of the Dothraki in one fell swoop. And of course, it's hard not to be impressed when you see her emerging from the fires unscathed. It's like a god being reborn, and that's why they all bow to her.